Okay, so let's take a look at this stuff a little closer. So this guy right here, all this is, is a uh, little crappy vise my buddy gave me. So it doesn't actually stick on anything, so uh, I had to hold on to it. But here's the, uh, here's the little actuator itself. Uh, it's a, a Spectrum servo. So, uh, you know, it came with a radio. It's probably, you know, a $10 servo tops. I'd say it's probably more like five bucks. And actually, you know, most of the time these things just get thrown away. Or like me, I have like eight of these thrown in the bottom of a box because no high performance radio controlled anything you use. You ever use one of these servos. So it's pretty easy to come by. Uh, on top of it is the series elastic portion, which was actually kind of a pain to figure out what to use as I was reading all these uh, papers. Really all you can find is PhD theses and stuff like that written about these uh, series elastic actuators. So what I ended up getting is um, a servo saver. So I, idea kind of popped into my head. I used to race RC cars and stuff like that. And so what this little device is, is it's a uh, spring-loaded device. So as you can see, I have one here that I, I took apart. Uh, this little white one here. Uh, it's a spring-loaded device that basically when you attach it onto the servo, it's meant to save the servo. So if I turn this servo all the way to an endpoint, uh, you know, if this was attached to steering wheels or something like that that's rigid mounted, uh, you can take this and you can turn it a little further and it's actually got a whole spring mechanism that's inside of this thing. Uh, let's see if you if you can get that. So this spring normally sits inside here like this and wraps around and there's a whole other top piece that goes on it and the, the whole thing comes together and is this nice little neat package. So it only costs a few bucks uh, and it does the job. Uh, and basically, as this is rigid mounted onto this servo here, the middle part of this little device, uh, let's see if you can get that, there we go. The middle part of it will be attached directly to the servo itself, while this outer portion here is the part that's going to still be able to rotate a little. So basically, knowing that, I, you, know, you need to attach something on the top of here to measure uh, the difference between this guy's position and the outside piece position. Uh, and that's how you're going to tell you know, if it's under any kind of stress, uh, like when, I'm, you know, when I was holding this, uh, if I'm if I'm pressing on this and getting it to move, uh, you know where the where the stress is with it. So I was going to use a potentiometer, but I was pretty sure that you know either I was going to suffer some kind of accuracy issue or or something else. So I figured for the for the first run, I'd like to use something with a little better result. So uh, this thing here uh, is basically you know you can think of it like a potentiometer. Uh, just with the amplifier circuit and everything built in. It actually came out of a joystick. Uh, it was uh, meant to be uh, just some random joystick that I had that you know had one on the X and Y axis. It's got three wires coming out of it. You power it with uh, three to five volts and then it'll just give you a signal out that's uh, varying anywhere from uh, like 0.8 volts to uh, 2.5 as this thing moves. So it was a real nice clean signal, so it kind of simplified the rest of the process. Uh, after messing with it, I believe you probably could do this with a potentiometer, absolutely no problem. Uh, and you're not going to run into any issues. Because uh, it's very, uh, it's kind of a very simple thing. The code that I wrote for it was very simple for this uh, initial deal. And I mean, you can see from the results, for basically kind of a, a couple days of playing around, and actually the, the worst part was just trying to figure out how am I going to mount all this stuff together so it's rigid enough. Uh, you know, the code itself probably only took, you know, half an hour, an hour just to kind of figure out, read these signals, you know, load up a development environment because I had wiped a computer since then and, and stuff like that. So to, to mount this on top of here, uh, basically, what I did was uh, took some portions of the joystick uh, controller itself that held this little, uh, it's, a, it's basically a magnetic sensor. There's a little sensor that's made by Molexis that's in here, and it just measures as a magnet goes by. So as this thing moves, uh, it's just basically moving a magnet in front of this little sensor to give the output. Uh, but a potentiometer or anything like that should work just fine too. So I basically just took that piece, 
mounted it to the front of this so you know this this whole plate is just screwed onto the bottom of this uh, little elastic uh, mechanism here right and then I put a, a plate off the front here is just uh, some plastic and uh, a little metal bar so that I can move it now to attach this to the middle portion that we want to measure uh, you know I could have taken I mean it's a little it's a little thin type you know it's a small piece of plastic so drilling it trying to mount create some mounting pins or something I mean all this stuff just to test it uh, you know I'm, I'm lazy right like I didn't want to do all that I just I want like instantaneous grata, you know, gratification right like I just want to see the thing work uh, so I basically took some of this uh, putty uh, this white uh, type putty stuff you use for hanging posters uh, and you know you put it on the back of the poster you press it onto the wall uh, it actually works surprisingly good so I just mashed a bunch of that stuff in the middle pressed this sensor onto it you know as I basically uh, kind of put this whole thing together it, you know the way I mounted it was that it positions the sensor as close as it can to that little uh, piece underneath so when I screw the whole thing together the sensor and that piece basically press together uh, not too hard to you know impede the sensor but just enough so that uh, as this piece rotates it also rotates that part as well uh, because there's you know the, this thing really there's no pressure it's actually easier in a potentiometer to move it just flops around so that's really all I needed that was you know there's all these different pieces I was kind of a little worried about like this servo saver it's not you know it's kinda as far as measuring uh, forces and things like that you know it's it's made out of plastic it's like five bucks right so it's not the most precision piece of equipment so I was a little worried about centering and things like that but uh, you know worked fine for RC car steering so I figured what the heck uh, and the whole thing seems to actually work very well I was, I was actually incredibly surprised that it all did work as well and as fast as it did because uh, most projects you know as anyone knows who's done a project generally don't um, so I'll you know post a couple links. Uh, I think you know compared to the stuff I've seen that is five hundred bucks, a thousand bucks for these different actuators people were making. I was amazed no one you know especially a lot of these guys that write these PhD papers. Uh, no one had made something that was just dirt cheap. You know because generally they're trying to get the cost down. They're trying to show advancements and things. Uh, and there's been quite a few that uh, that wrote stuff and you know had real you know awesome concepts and stuff like that. But they were all you know. 500 bucks a sensor, they're using expensive stepper motors, they have encoders on the back end, encoders on the top, I mean, they got stuff every which way, uh, and that's cool and everything, but, you know, I think you probably get very good results with something as simple as this, especially for just, uh, like, you know, stuff that a bunch of us are going to do, right, play around in our home or something like that, so, uh, you know, as you can see, all this is, it's kind of a large mechanism, but I think if a smaller potentiometer was used, uh, mounted a little closer, uh, things like that. But, you know, and obviously this is kind of real big just for demonstration purposes. Uh, you know, you could you could probably make something that's quite small and could be part of a maybe a four you know four servo uh, arm type actuator or something like that. So uh, I think that would be pretty fun to make and be able to grab the end of the arm and just drag it to wherever you want. Uh, so considering how cheap this actually is to make, I, I think I might make a few and maybe try to make a, a little robotic arm that can, you know, just be positioned almost like you would, uh, you know, a lamp that you, you drag around to wherever you want light, uh, but just using these servo mechanisms. Uh, to program this, uh, I used a, uh, let me see if I can rotate this over here and show you real quick. Uh, where is it? It's hidden back there. Uh, it's in the back. It's a uh, Texas Instruments uh, MSP430 microcontroller, uh, and really all I had to do was use one of the one of the A to D inputs uh, to read that sensor output, and then basically just uh, drove the the PWM for the servo from one of the uh, the timers on there out of uh, out of one of the pins on the the microcontroller, uh, which is going over here into the breadboard. So, you know, the, I just have a couple wires I plug in. Uh, I drive the PWM for the servo, uh, and then I, met, you know, I monitor that, uh, that little sensor on top, the voltage level, uh, found kind of where the center voltage level was, and then depending on pressure on either side, 
uh, you know, for the one that's running that's just moving back and forth, or the other one if I want to drag it, I just watch for pressure either way, depending where that pressure is, then I just increment or decrement the pulse width that I'm sending out to the servo. Uh, and so I just do it by one pulse increment. I was doing it by 15 or 20, and what I noticed is I push on the servo, and then the server would jump, and the whole thing was jerky. So I just got it down to, you know, I'll increase uh, the pulse width by uh, just one increment on the timer or decrement it by one, and it's a real fluid motion when you're moving it. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm thinking this is pretty awesome. Uh, I'd like to see other people make some things. I was surprised I couldn't find more. Uh, you know, I'd seen papers uh, by uh, students of Rodney Brooks and, you know, all these different robotics guys all the way back to, like, 1995. Uh, and the more I read about it, the more interesting uh, this was. Uh, and for whatever reason, nobody seems to have... Uh, kind of grabbed onto this and done something with it, but uh, there seems to be a lot of potential, so uh, hopefully uh, there'll be some more and, and we can make some cool things with it and, you know, make something that's low cost so that other people can play with it versus, you know, these thousand dollar actuators. So uh, until next time, uh, now this blog officially has something other than the Needle Lighter. See you later.